ultimately, I mean, with the condition of the cells and everything here, this is kind of, no matter what we do here, it's kind of a Band-Aid fix. This pack is kind of end of life. We might try to see if we can source some other cell replacement option at some point in the future. But in the meantime, I just want to get this thing put together so that it runs and I can use the car. And maybe it'll last a year or two. But anyways, back to the issue at hand here with the cooling system. I know that what a lot of folks have done is they bypass the cooling system on the outside of the battery. So they take the, the tubes here and just create a loop on the outside. I, so my idea instead was to create just a U-shaped bypass. These are 3D printed on my on my resin printer. These are just a, a prototype essentially to make sure it fit. We'll get our new pieces printed up. We'll uh, get them on here. We'll do the testing. And then hopefully we should be able to do the final assembly on the battery pack and get it into the car. If this was a customer car, there's no possible way that I would ever do anything like this. But anyway, this is just kind of a, a project that I thought would be kind of fun to mess with, and hopefully we'll get a, at least a somewhat satisfactory result out of all of this. Alrighty, we've got our parts pulled up here. I have all the parameters set up for the resin that I'm going to use to print our little bypass manifolds here. I've got my special resin right here. This should hold up uh, with pretty good chemical resistance to the coolant. This stuff is pricey. It's about 80 bucks for this little bottle. Um, and we're going to stick it on my resin printer here. So let's get that going. Alrighty, there it goes. We're starting the print. Hopefully it works out well. It should take about five hours. So we'll come back to it then. Alrighty. We're working on the coolant delete use for our cooling system here. But what I've got right here are a whole bunch of little uh, just caps. And we're going to stick these on each one of the inlets and outlets on all the cooling plates. Um, since we're not going to be putting the cooling system back. So anyway, we'll uh, go ahead and get all these put on. Uh, there's a ton of these, so it's going to take me a minute, but here we go. Alrighty, we've got all of our little caps on there on both sides. And here's our two new uh, little loop pieces for the cooling system. So this one's ready to install as it is, but this one we still need to add our O-rings and the other little pieces for it. So I've got a couple of our old coolant tubes here to be donors, and this little black plastic piece on the end just pops right out. And then we can take the O-ring out of it like so. And then we'll take the O-ring, put it into our new piece, make sure it's in there all the way, and then our little black plastic piece can just snap right back on there, and boom, that's installed. So we'll do the same for the other one as well. Bingo, and now it's ready to go. Alrighty, so now we can install our piece on the tubes here. So we've got our part there with the O-rings in it. I'll start with the lower one. It's a little bit tricky on these, but it's not too difficult. So just push that into place, and then the the snap goes right on, the little retainer clip, and then we'll do the same with the upper one.
And that one's on too. And we'll do the other side. Alrighty, so on the other side here, we'll take our other one. We'll push that right into there. And again, we'll just take our little plastic clip, get that clipped on. Boom. And now we're ready to test and make sure that we don't have any leaks. Alrighty, so here's our setup to test the cooling. I actually removed the side panel with the inlets and outlets off of the battery over there since uh, if it does leak, we don't want to end up back at square one where we have a bunch of coolant in the base plate. So it was easy enough to just take this right back off and we'll test it outside of the battery. Um, I've got a just a little 12 volt uh, coolant pump rigged up here. So I've got it sucking out of a bin of new coolant going into the inlet tube. And then of course from the inlet tube, it tees off in both directions here. And then of course from both sides, it returns back to this T over here, which is the outlet. And then that'll just go right back to our reservoir of coolant. And then I just have a, a little uh, bench top power supply that I'll provide power to the pump with. And uh, not sure how long I'll let this run for, but probably, you know, at least an hour, uh, but maybe more. I might let it run for several hours or even overnight. So let's get this thing started. Alrighty folks, we're back at it again. It's actually the next day uh, and I just let this thing run all night. It's been about 14 hours that this thing's been running continuously and still not so much as even a drop of coolant from our little bypass pieces here. So I think we're all good there. I'll uh, get our test rig disassembled here and we'll get back to, uh, we'll get this thing back on the battery and work on doing the rest of the reassembly. And hopefully we can get the pack back into the car here sometime later today. All right, we've got our side panel ready to go back on here. I've got some sealant applied to the bottom of it. I'll try and get stuff in position here. And then we'll actually get this bolted down into position so it's where it needs to be before uh, we start connecting all the other stuff up. That nut's actually going to be temporary because we'll have to take it back off to put the other piece on, but I want to make sure that this gets compressed down and we get the sealant where it needs to be. Might need an extension. Alrighty, so our side panel's on. Now we can connect the rest of our wiring up to everything that it needs to go to. So we've got this stuff here. Alrighty, we're gonna go ahead and get our other side panel piece on here. I've got my sealant applied to the areas that I need to on that. 
It's going to be a little bit tricky because it's a bit of a juggling act to get everything in. I need to get the data connector input onto it. I need to get the cable uh, from the output on the that center plug onto this contactor and then I also have to get the bus bars for the disconnect connected to the modules on this side. So it'll be a little bit of a juggling act but we'll get it done. battery is all reassembled uh, now it's time to get it into the car and that way we can uh, test it don't see any reason why it shouldn't work um, of course the the main problem before was uh, the isolation issues caused by the coolant in the bottom of the battery anyway, uh, let's get to actually putting the battery into the car and uh, then we'll test it out and make sure everything's working properly
All right, the battery's in. So now we can start reconnecting everything else. Uh, I'll start with our high voltage connectors here. Uh, I need to remove a zip tie that I have up there. We'll plug in the two connectors on top here first. I just push right into place, two clicks. So that's click one, and that's click two. And then we push in the little locking tabs on them. And then, I guess you can't really see that, but we got the two upper ones in. And now the lower one goes on. So this one kind of pushes on like so. And once we get it on there far enough that it's under the locking lever here, then we push the locking lever down while pushing the connector into place until it snaps into position like so. And then we push the blue locking tab in, and that keeps it from coming apart. Now we can turn our attention to the cooling lines. I'll get our harness pushed into place here as well. It just has a couple little clips that hold it on. And now we can take our coolant hoses, and they just press on to the nipples here, and they have those little locking tabs that hold them into place. That one's on. And that one's on too. Now I can remove our clamps. Okay, so cooling hoses are on, harness is in, everything's plugged in there. Alrighty, so we've got our data connector here, and you can see it's got a bolt right there in the center of it, and that's how it attaches. It doesn't clip on or anything. So we just kind of push that in there as far as we can, and then we take our ratchet, and we just run that bolt in there. It's kind of a long-winded one, so it kind of takes a minute. Alrighty, that's in. Doesn't need to be super tight, just uh, nice and snug so it holds the connector on. And that is solid. Now we want to get our other high-voltage connector on, and this one is the same as the one on the side there. We just push it into place until it starts rotating the handle. And we want to rotate the handle and push it in. We want to kind of help it so we don't break the handle off. And once it's all the way on there, it should kind of snap into place there. And then our little blue locking tab pushes in, which is a little bit tough. There we go. So now everything's plugged in except for our high voltage disconnects. So that'll be our next step is we'll put the disconnects on and then reconnect the 12 volt battery. And then we should be able to start the car and get the cooling system purged. Um, I guess we need to put our kind of lower subframe piece back on here as well, which I didn't actually show on the disassembly, but I'll get us uh, putting it back on. All righty, here's kind of our lower subframe skid plate assembly, whatever you want to call it. It's got this kind of fabric under tray that's attached. 
uh, that kind of goes over the top of it, so you can't really do the two individually. Um, so anyway, we'll get this thing installed. It sort of, I guess, is supposed to protect the battery, but it just is a weird hodgepodge thing. It's just a bunch of rectangular tubing uh, welded together. Kind of looks like something that somebody would have built in a high school shop class. So we'll get that on. Lined up with a couple of bolts. Okay, there's one in. Okay, we've got those started. Now I'll get the rest of the bolts and we can get this thing the rest of the way on there. Alrighty, we've got some more hardware here. Just want to get these started. Make sure everything lines up the way it's supposed to. Alrighty, now we just have a couple of other fasteners to get in that just hold this uh, whatever fabric shield in place. Bingo. We were missing a few clips on here to start with, so I'll see if I can scrounge up a few clips uh, to reattach this thing properly. Alrighty, I got one of my kits of clips here. I think I have some that look right. Yeah, that'll do it. Bingo, all right, that's assembled. Now we just need to uh, get our high voltage disconnects in and uh, plug in the 12 volt battery. And then I think we can purge some coolant. All right, I cleaned our high voltage disconnect up a little bit just because it was super duper crusty. But I think I got it clean enough where it should fit. Of course, the hard part is that it doesn't fit in here properly when it's in the fully unlocked position, which makes things a little bit tricky. So we'll go in the halfway unlocked position past the e-brake cable, and then we'll kind of part way push it into place here. I might have it backwards. Yep. There we go. And now we need to get this fully unlocked because it will not lock into place properly if you do it wrong. So you want this handle to be vertical in relation to the rest of the, the body of the disconnect. We push it all the way in as far as it'll go. And then we push the locking handle down and it should suck the, the disconnect into place. There we go, and it's locked in. So now we can do the one that's uh, for the upper battery as well. Alrighty, so we've got the car back down on the ground here. We can go ahead and open this door to get to our disconnect back there. For the upper battery, we can go ahead and get that thing installed. So it's the exact same process as the other one. Handle in the vertical position and then push it into place. Alrighty, now we can get our 12 volt battery reconnected here. So, we'll just put that on there. I can hear the car making noises, and I think the DRLs flashed there for a second as well. Uh, let me grab a 10 millimeter to tighten that down with.
Bingo. All right, we're, I just noticed we're missing a nut on our tie down, uh, but we can fix that later. Let's see if it starts. All righty, moment of truth. Let's see if it starts. Looks like we have signs of life. We got our key in the car here. Let's hit the start button. Door ajar. Turn that off. Look at that, no errors, ready to drive. Put it into gear and make sure it moves. And it does. We're still on the lift, so I don't want to really drive it or anything, but awesome. I'll uh, get the lift arms cleared and we'll take it for a quick spin. Uh, I guess we need to purge the coolant first, though, so let's do that. All righty. Not sure if you can hear that, but the AC compressor and stuff is running because the car is still on. We want our pumps to run. We probably shouldn't have to add very much coolant since we don't have the cooling system on the battery itself anymore and uh, of course we clamped the line so we didn't lose a ton when we took everything apart so I'm just gonna top this up to the max line and then hopefully we're good to go and we don't have to uh, purge any more air out but there might be a little bit we'll have to purge all right we're up just a touch above the max line and that should be just about perfect all righty we got our coolant topped up. Let's take her for just a quick spin around the block. Alrighty, we just made it onto the street and our C manual orange wrench just popped up. So I'm just gonna go around the block real quick and then we'll head back into the shop and plug in and see what codes we have present. Alrighty, so I'm pulling up four scan on the computer here. We'll uh, hit OK here, plug into the car, and then let's see what we got. We want to connect to vehicle. Yes, that's fine. Yes, that is the vehicle. Okay. So we do have that isolation fault present again. Let's clear it and see what happens. It may have been a stored thing from before because I don't know if I cleared it uh, immediately before pulling the pack. So maybe that was a stored fault that it popped back up. Okay, so it wants us to cycle the ignition off And back on again. Yeah, so we're still getting an isolation fault. Time to do some further testing, I guess, and see where we're at. So I noticed the coolant reservoir was pretty much drained all the way to empty. And as you can see, I pulled the plug out of the battery here, and it's just dumping coolant out of there. So uh, something's gone catastrophically wrong with our bypass. Don't know if it was a failure of the bypass itself or something else, uh, but clearly it was just dumping coolant into the pack. So I'm gonna let this drain and then I'll pull the pack back out again and uh, we'll see what went wrong. Alrighty, so I've skipped way ahead I got the battery back out of the car and took everything apart. And uh, what I decided to do is I took the side panel and hooked it up to the coolant lines. And I actually have four scan going up there. And what I did was I commanded the, the battery coolant pump to 100%. And I still don't have any signs of a leak, which whatever leak would have been present before would have been pretty significant. So it's a real puzzle. I mean, I've tried playing around with these things 
moving them around, trying to stress them out. This one, if I move it around enough and get these things to kind of unclip off of it, I can get it to leak just a tiny bit. This one seems pretty solid. I mean, I haven't seen so much as a drop of coolant out of this one. So, I can try and reprint another one of these, or what I can do is I can plug this side and just leave this side intact. So, I think I'll give that a shot first and see how that goes. Alrighty folks, we're back on the focus again here. I've kind of torn my hair out over the last few days trying to figure out what exactly went wrong with our system here. I tried testing a bunch of different ways. I actually took this whole apparatus back off and mounted it in the car on the cooling lines, hooked up with 4Scan, and as you saw, we ran the pumps at 100% duty cycle, and I could not duplicate the failure mode that this thing had when it was all put together. I suspect it may have been this um, little bypass on this side in particular, but I wasn't able to confirm that. I mean, I tried moving it around all sorts of different ways, and I just could not get it to leak, at least as profusely as it seemed like it was when everything was assembled. I did get like maybe one or two little drops out of it, but nothing like what we saw previously. So. I kind of went back and forth trying to decide what was a different way that I could bypass this. And ultimately, I think I've ended up deciding that the best solution for the goal that we're trying to accomplish, which is ultimately just a temporary repair to get this car back on the road, is to bypass the cooling externally, which when you think about it kind of makes the most sense. I just got really hung up on wanting to try and keep the temperature sensors inside the battery to keep the thermal management system happy. But I know that other people have done this type of modification where they do it externally. So I think I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently than what other, some other folks have done. So I'm actually going to eliminate the cooling system, not just for the lower battery, but also for the upper battery, which means we're kind of killing two birds with one stone. The upper battery doesn't seem to have any coolant intrusion as of right now. I did pull the inspection plugs out of it, so there's one, and the other one is back here somewhere, right there. Um, doesn't have any coolant intrusion yet, but if the lower pack had it happening, the upper pack is effectively a ticking time bomb. So. If I eliminate the cooling system from that and evacuate as much coolant as possible out of it, hopefully we should be able to avoid having to take that pack out and do the same work that we did with the upper pack here. So I did already clean out the upper pack as well as I could. Um, I wanted to try and avoid taking the modules out again, and I think I got enough coolant out of it that it should be fine. Uh, there might be a couple little spots that I can clean up a little bit. Again, not ideal. Probably not something that I would ever want to do if this were a customer car. But ultimately, for all intents and purposes, this is just going to be a runabout car for me. And if I end up having to do more work to it in the future, it is what it is. And ultimately, my end goal for the long term is to figure out some sort of pack swap solution for this. So, like we explained in the last video, and probably previously in this video too, the ultimate end goal is going to be to try and figure out some sort of pack swap solution for this uh, that'll be a, you know, a permanent solution and something that's going to last long term. Even if we did re-implement the cooling system on this, I mean, with the amount of swelling and stuff in the cells, this pack is just kind of near end of life. There's only only so much it has left to give. So anyways, back to our updated coolant delete method. So like I said, we're going to delete the upper pack as well as our lower pack cooling. And the method that I'm going to do for that is actually I'm going to put a bypass loop between this fitting here and this fitting on the onboard charger. So the way that the system works is 
if I recall correctly, the inlet side is this upper fitting here. So it comes to here, it tees off, one side goes to the upper pack, the other side goes to the lower pack, and then all of the cooling loop goes through, and then they both return to this T where it goes through the onboard charger and back to the coolant reservoir and everything. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to remove these pipes. Of course, I'll save them so that we can reuse them later, but I'll remove these pipes. I'll cap off the lines here. And what I'll do is I'll just, I'll leave our little bypass things on here and I'll cap the lines off on this as well, just so we don't get contamination inside of there. And then I'll remove the lines here and we'll just put a bypass hose that goes between the two fittings here. And that should be our simplest way to bypass the cooling, which really I just got caught up on trying to keep the coolant temperature sensors happy, but ultimately the, I think the simplest solution here is going to be the best. And uh, so we'll get started on that. Should go pretty quick. Uh, we still need to reseal up the battery here, but that's a pretty quick process, uh, which we already went over. So I'm not gonna bother showing it again, but I'll get this thing all sealed back up, put back together. And then uh, we'll bypass our cooling system here. And then, uh, then we should be able to get the car properly running again uh, without any isolation issues this time. Alrighty, we'll get our first coolant line off here. There we go. First one done. And now we can get the second one off. All right, so now I want to evacuate as much coolant as possible out of the upper pack here. I've got this apparatus that I use for uh, actually leak testing battery packs. It puts out very low pressure. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stick it on each of the coolant lines there and just try and push any coolant out that's in there. So. We'll turn on the air here, and then I'll just try and seal this up as well as possible. You can see we've got coolant coming out there. I think I might actually put a hose on it so it's not dripping down my arm the whole time. All right, there we go. We've got our hose attached. Now we'll crank this thing up again. And I'll just try and keep this on here until I don't see any more coolant coming out. All right, seems like it's struggling on that one. Now we'll flip it around and do it the other way. Alrighty, so we're gonna get our bypass hose in place. This is just a piece of three quarter inch uh, coolant hose. Heater hose, you might call it. And we'll just loop it around right back to where it belongs. Clamps into place. Bingo.
Alrighty, so the battery's back in the car. Now we'll just reconnect everything. Uh, same process we did last time, so I'm not going to go too much into detail, but I'll get it, go ahead and get everything connected up here. Alrighty, we've got everything put together, coolant topped off, 12 volt battery connected. Let's see how she goes. I expect there might be some stored alerts since I did have the car on to run the pumps without the battery connected, but let's see. Yeah, so I have a stop safely now. I'll probably have to clear that out since that would have been stored from before. So let me do that real quick. Alrighty, we got it running. I did clear out the leftover alerts from before, but I do have an alert for the coolant pump now, so I've got the, the wrench icon on there for that. But other than that, everything appears to be functional. So let's go for a spin. Alrighty, let's go. Drives just as smooth as ever. All clear. I have to say this car does have a, a decent amount of spunk. stuff well I think at least for now we've about got this one licked apart from our little coolant pump issue which I'll have to figure out later my laptop died as I was trying to figure that one out so anyway we'll get back to the shop and wrap things up alrighty folks well I think that's gonna do it for now on the focus um, we got it driving. Uh, the coolant pump issue that we had on our test drive there in the last clip you saw actually cleared itself up with, uh, with just a couple of key cycles. So I think that was just left over from me screwing with the pumps uh, when I was trying to do that leak testing earlier. Um, but yeah, anyways, for all intents and purposes, we're pretty much done uh, with this car. It still has a few little things that need to be done. Uh, it needs a good cleanup because it sat for quite a while. Uh, just lots of moss and stuff growing on it. Um, you know, interior's dirty, all that stuff. Um, mechanically, everything else seems pretty good. Uh, apart from the suspension, especially in the rear, it's a little bit sagged out, uh, which is common on these cars because they're, they're really tail heavy uh, compared to the gas focus and the suspension is not quite up to that. So maybe we'll address those things in the future. Uh, but in the meantime, for all intents and purposes, uh, 
I'm pretty much done with this thing. I'll just uh, drive it around and see how things hold up. And at some point in the future, we might do that battery upgrade that I talked about. Uh, but anyways, for now, that'll do it. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned.